Hello everyone. Um, so this is Natas level 9 to level 10. Um, and we have a very similar looking application to last time. And we have this input form where we can find words containing and we have an output. Um, I figure that if I put an A in here, yeah. So it looks very similar to the, the previous application, except from we have this line at the top. For security reasons, we now filter on certain characters. So I imagine that that means they're going to filter out the semicolons, as we used in the last exercise. Um, we want to be able to chain commands, and uh, we need the semicolon or an ampersand to do that. Um, but let's try our sort of proof of concept from last time, which was sandwiching this ls command in. As you can see that, yeah, the, the input contains an illegal character. Um, so I guess that's what's happening. And if we look at the source code, we can confirm this. We have what looks to be very similar, again, as to last time. We're looking for the, we're getting the key, which is just what we're um, inputting in the search form. Um, but this time we have this line here. If preg match and then some string against key, then we, we print this input contains an illegal character and else we run the same command as last time, which is passed through grep um, case insensitive with our key against the dictionary.txt file. So it's worth us seeing what this preg match does. So it performs a regular expression match. And I'm sure it gives us an example. Yeah, it gives us some examples here. And um, one thing to know, notice, is that because of the because it's a regular expression, these forward slashes sort of represent the regular expression. So everything in between is what we're matching against. So we're basically looking at the key and we're seeing if it contains an opening, a square bracket, a semicolon, a pipe, an ampersand, or a closing square bracket. If it contains any of them, we print input contains an illegal character, else um, we run the command as normal. So we've lost our semicolons and we've lost the ampersands, which are sort of the two ways that we can chain together commands. So looking at this grep command, there's no way for us to sort of break it into several commands chained together, um, which allows us to sort of sandwich in our own command of choice. Um, in the middle. Um, but all is not lost. We still, we're still using this grep and we're still injecting exactly what we write inside the command. And I don't know if you remember in the last exercise, towards the end I actually mentioned how one of the ways we could complete the previous task was instead of sort of breaking it into several pieces, we could like finish, complete the grep command. We could use this key to be a part of the grep command um, and maybe get it to work that way. Um, so in, in the previous one, just for, oops, just as a reminder, I kind of said, why don't we do something like this, where we search for the letter A in Etsy, Natas web pass, and that was Natas 10, but this would be Natas 11. I said, why don't we do something like this, where we inject this, and then as long as there was a letter A, in the natas11 password file, then we would get that printed as an output. 
I said as well that we might expect to have to try A, B, C, 0, 1, 2 till we found a character that is in the NATAS11 uh, or NATAS10 password file in that case. Um, the only problem with this is we're still using a semicolon um, in that sort of style of attack. So we need to remove the semicolon. And I would be immediately tempted to wonder what this would do, where if we just put a space instead of a semicolon, um, what would happen? Um, and we can we can just try this, but we can also look at the man pages of grep to see what happens if we were to supply two file names um, to search against. Um, and so let's look at that first. If we run grep, you can actually see in the synopsis here at the end where we specify the file, there is a dot dot dot, um, which sort of hints at the fact that we could probably put more than one file in. And if we read the description, it says the grep utility searches any given input files, selecting lines that match one or more patterns. So the command can actually take more than one file. So with that knowledge in hand, I would be tempted just to try this exact injection. So we would be injecting this um, into the command and see what happens. Um, so let's let's try that. So a let's see Natas web pass Natas eleven. Uh, and then just a space. Oh, we don't even think we need a space because the space was already in there for us. Yeah. And so you can see that what grep does is it sort of prepends the file out of the files we chose um, and then the line of text that we found. And it just so happens that there's a case insensitive A or and a, and a lowercase a in the password itself. So it picked that up. Um, and then the rest are just the dictionary.txt uh, lines that contain the letter A. So that's like how we've solved this one. Um, it's just a case of, okay, we can no longer separate and create several commands. We're gonna have to try and exploit sort of the grep command itself, you know, we're going to try and inject something into grep um, and see if that's a potential um, attack vector. So that's how we how we do this this level. Um, and just a passing comment as well. I sort of thought after I finished the last one, you know, when we would if we were doing this in re real life, you know, where we couldn't view the source code it's obviously going to be much, much harder. We can only make these exploits because we know exactly what's happening on the back end. So, but by doing these, we can start to build up an intuition of how the code used on the server might look for these particular functions. Like up until now, maybe you didn't understand how, um, you know, searching a dictionary and providing the output might look as code on a server. Um, as you get more familiar with that, you can start to sort of guess as to what commands they might be using, how they might be using them, and the potential um, vulnerabilities that there might be with the different ways. And so the sort of the, the process of attack would then be trying payloads that would work in all of those different scenarios um, until you hopefully find one that fits. So you're trying to sort of reason about the code on the server without being able to see it. And thankfully, Natas has provided you the source code for each of these, so you can completely uh, remove that part of um, the process. That's how you would sort of go about this um, in a real life setting, or sort of a, a less toy kind of setting. Um, yeah, so I hope that helps. and. Um, yeah, that was quite nice. And let's see what the next one has. Okay.
Bye.